Good morning, and welcome to Worship with the Institute of Lutheran Theology. I'm Dave Patterson, the pastor of Pioneer Lutheran Church in White, South Dakota. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text I've chosen for this morning comes from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 44. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away, so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, "What? that would take eight months of a man's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have, he asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said, five and two fishes. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples and set to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of men who had eaten was 5,000. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Growing up, there was something about my family that I didn't realize until I was much older. We were poor. I didn't realize this because I never went without what I really needed and many of the things that I just wanted. I had food and clothing. I had a roof over my head and presents at Christmas. So how could my family be poor? Realizing this was a matter of looking at the little things. All the kids that hung around my house after school and all the kids that were already there when I got home for school were there because my mom was babysitting them all. They didn't call it daycare back then. All the sewing my mom did wasn't because my parents just loved wearing homemade clothes but because they couldn't afford to buy clothes for us and for themselves as well. All the cars my dad worked on in the evening wasn't because he just enjoyed tinkering. In fact, I think he rather despised it. But because he was making extra money working on all his friends' and neighbors' cars. And then there was this odd tradition we had at Christmas time where my dad 
disappeared almost entirely between Thanksgiving and Christmas because of the two extra jobs he worked so that just before Christmas, Mom could go and get our presents out of layaway at Kmart. So why did they do all of this for us? Not for the recognition. Not for our appreciation. They did it out of love. If you asked them why, I'm not sure they would have understood the question. It's just what you do. But the answer is that they gave of themselves to care for us, regardless of their own condition, because of feelings deep down at the core of their being that compelled them to care for us. In the text that I have just read for this morning, this feeling is translated as compassion. Now let's take a moment and look at Jesus' condition. Jesus is exhausted. Our text says that they had not even had a chance to eat. So Jesus took his disciples to a quiet place to rest. We often forget that though fully divine, Jesus was fully human, is fully human as well. As a man, Jesus suffered the same physical limitations that we all faced. He got tired. He got hungry. He needed rest. Put yourself in his position. He is surrounded by crowds, all wanting his touch, his word, his healing. Each wanting Jesus to care for her or him. Never a moment of peace. How would you feel? Jesus is exhausted. And all he wants is a place to be alone for just a little while to rest just a little time for himself and his disciples. So they went away by themselves to a solitary place. But the crowd was oblivious of Jesus' feelings. They didn't know. They saw Jesus going, so they ran to meet him. And when Jesus landed and saw that large crowd standing before him, he had compassion for them. His feelings for them deep down at the core of his being compelled him to care for them. Now as evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away, so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. This is interesting. The disciples don't say, let us all go to the villages and buy some food. The disciples say, let them go. You see, what sounds on the surface like good, rational thinking is in fact selfishness. They want Jesus to themselves. They want to be alone. They want to rest. But Jesus loves the people. He has compassion for the crowd. He says to the disciples, You give them something to eat. How do the disciples respond? They were incredulous. They said to him, that would take eight months of a man's wages 
Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? And when Jesus asked them to go and see how many loaves they had, they said, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fishes. In other words, yes, we have food, but not enough to share. We have barely enough for us, and certainly not enough for all these people. Again, the disciples seem to express sound reason. But again, they are being selfish. They are thinking of themselves and not the crowd. They don't say, look, we have a little food. Maybe it will tide them over until we can all go to the villages and get some food. They don't say, look, we have a little food. Maybe, Lord, if you bless it, this food will be enough for the crowd. They've seen Jesus perform miracles enough to reasonably think that this was within his power. In fact, each of them had already gone out and performed miracles in his name. Remember the beginning of our lesson, they were telling him all they had done and taught. They could have reasonably thought that they could have blessed the food in Jesus' name, and then they would have had enough. But they aren't thinking of the crowd. They do not feel the loving compassion that Jesus feels. They are thinking of themselves. But Jesus does love the people. He has compassion for the crowd. So he tells the disciples to give him the food, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blesses them. He gives thanks and he breaks the loaves. He gives them to the disciples and the disciples give them to the people. He divided this small amount of food into Twelve parts, and parceled them out to the twelve disciples, and sent the disciples to the people to feed them with this little, insufficient amount of food. And here is where the miracle takes place. Jesus doesn't take the food and miraculously multiply it and direct the disciples to share out of this abundance. He could have done so, but he didn't. No. He has them give out the little, insufficient bit of food. Give out all that they have, even though it looks like it could never be enough. And in giving what little they had, it was multiplied. And all the people ate and were satisfied. And when the disciples picked up the crumbs and all in the faint hope of just having something left for themselves to eat, they each picked up an entire basketful of broken pieces that were left over. They came back with more than what they started with Together, they gave away their snack and returned with a feast. This morning's text shows us what it means as Christians to give. We, like Jesus, are to give out of love and compassion. We are to be compelled from the depth of our hearts to 
to reach out and care for others. You see, we are saved by a free gift of faith. We are saved from the power of sin and death by a gift. And that gift builds within us love and compassion. True love for God, our Father, who has given us this blessed gift, and love for our neighbor. And this love compels us to action. As Jesus was compelled by his love to give of himself, so we, as the body of Christ, should by our love feel compelled to give of ourselves. We should not give from our abundance what we can afford when it is best for us. We give regardless of our own condition and regardless of how how little we have to give. As the body of Christ, we should not think first of our needs and second of their needs. We should not concern ourselves with our needs at all. We should, as the body of Christ, be concerned with the needs of those around us and seek with however little or much God gives us to care for them. As for our own needs, we do not need to be concerned about them. Our Heavenly Father has already given us eternal life, has already given us salvation from sin and death itself. What are the little things of this earthly life? Won't He care for those as well? Hasn't He promised to do this? For our Heavenly Father, just as my earthly parents did for me and yours undoubtedly did for you, will provide for our needs as we care for the needs of others. Not partially, not a little bit, but miraculously and abundantly. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a wonderful day.